my name is Desiree Stage. I am an artist uh, and a suicide prevention advocate. Um, I created, in 2010, I created a series of portraits and oral histories of suicide attempt survivors called Live Through This. Um, at this juncture, six years later, I have interviewed 168 suicide attempt survivors across the U.S. When I'm doing this project, I'm, I'm holding space for somebody. I'm listening to them, and in a lot of cases, I'm listening to a story that's being told for the first time. Um, a story that people said this person shouldn't tell. Um, so it's actually really inspiring. Um, and I feel like I'm in a room with somebody brave. Um, it's, it can be difficult. You know, there, there are days where I'll hear a story that just hits home in a way that is really tough. Um, and I just, at that point, make use of, I, I take my toolbox out, you know, I've been working on, on my own coping for years, so it's one of those things, you know, I just go home and I talk to my wife and I hang out with my dogs and I, you know, I read or whatever I am feeling will make me feel better. Um, but for the most part, it's not difficult, it's not difficult to be there with someone in that way. It's exhausting. <laughs> it can be very tiring. I can only do three interviews in a day. They're usually about two hours long. Um, but past it being exhausting and occasionally difficult, it's really rewarding, mostly. Um, it's not depressing for me. I feel very strongly that every person's mental health depends on the people around them. Every person around them. I think, for me, in an ideal world, we would all create a safety net for one another. Um, and we would each be aware of what the signs are, and we wouldn't be afraid to ask about it directly. Um, so I don't think the responsibility lies within, with employers or um, employee assistance programs and the larger um, media conglomerates. I, I just, I think it's the people around you. Um, and the thing I think of is, you know, I have my therapist, I have my psychiatrist. I see my therapist once every two weeks. I see my psychiatrist once a month. When it gets bad, my therapist works nine to five. You know, so does my psychiatrist. They're not gonna be my first line of, um, they're not gonna be the first people that I call. The people that I call first are going to be, well, the person next to me who is my wife, you know, or my mom, or my friends. Um, so that's why I think that safety net is important. A lot of people would say that's a really simplistic view uh, because a lot of people don't have support systems. And that, that's true. But having been raised, or having come up when I did, I've found the value of community on the internet, and I have really good communities on the internet. So I think there is an element of, of finding your people that falls on the person who, who is struggling. You know, one of the things we say in the suicide prevention field is, oh, we don't talk about it enough. Um, and there is definitely an element of that, of denial, of this is not happening to me, this will not happen to me this does not apply, and so I don't need to talk about it, think about it, care about it. But, I, last spring, my wife and uh, one of her best friends was in town, and they were like, let's go see Birdman. And I was like, what is Birdman? Something about Batman. I was like, that sounds terrible, but sure, I'll go. Um, and it was a Sunday afternoon, and I'm watching this movie, and I'm watching this movie, and I see this very clear kind of textbook devolution um, of this man's mental health and I was like shit this movie is about suicide can I please have a day off from suicide and at that point I started logging every time I saw a reference to suicide in um, popular media not including 
articles on the internet because usually I'm scouring the internet looking for news about suicide. Um, but so that's TV, music, podcasts, books, and what I'm found was that almost every day there was some reference to suicide somewhere. So to me, that means we are thinking about it. It's almost it's it's on it's like in our deeply embedded in our cultural psyche. Uh, but we don't know what to do with that. So that's something I'm spending a lot of time letting roll around in my, my little brain. One of the first people that I interviewed for the project um, at all, I think she was the third person I interviewed back in 2011. Um, you know, someone who works for the Associated Press. And for her, a lot of, um, a lot of what was behind her attempt was the pressure of her job, of being a journalist, of wanting to be a good journalist, of, of just needing to validate, I think, herself more than anything else, um, to know that she's doing the right thing and she's making a change in the world through her work. Mainly I yell at journalists. <laughs> I'm like, come on, guidelines, let's, let's talk about suicide in a way that is more thoughtful. Uh, so most of most of my my journalist collaborations are <laughs> me complaining. Well, no, let's talk about that. And then the journalists reporting mm -hmm. on suicide. That's what you're yep. talking about. Yeah. So when you were using one phrases or it's insensitive right. or. Whatever. Yeah. Um, so there are guidelines uh, that were set forth by the world's leading suicide prevention organizations. At this juncture, it doesn't seem that they're necessarily evidence-based, but I think they're a good foundation for people to um, look at and really consider when they're covering these stories. I don't, so you have the word don't, don't use commit, which makes sense because there are a lot of implications there, and as journalists we care about words, right? So if there's a negative implication, Nah. Um, avoid talking about method. A lot of journalists love to, to be like, it was a dark and stormy night and she was holding a razor blade. And you don't need that. Um, I find myself thinking frequently about journalists and uh, people who spend a, a lot more time immersing themselves in suicide plot lines like say TV, people who make TV, uh, people who make films, and what the differences are because we spend a lot of time yelling at journalists and we don't spend a lot of time yelling at the other people. Um, but we have training for journalists and we don't have training for the other people. I know that exposure is hard because um, like we were talking about, I'm, I'm exposed to pretty intense discussion of suicide every day of my life, um, both my own attempt and my own experiences and others. So I can imagine being exposed to war every day, being a war journalist, or car accidents, or you know any of that stuff. Um, I can imagine that that would be very difficult, especially if you don't have the support of your agency, or you know if you're a complete freelancer, you're, you're kind of on your own. Um, but if you don't have someone bolstering you in those times, absolutely that could affect your mental health because if you don't know how to talk about it, if you don't have anyone to talk about it with, it just kind of sits here. And at some point, there is the potential that you might not handle that very well.